Andre can come wandering in. Um, feel free to stand, sit however you are comfortable. Where should be up on the big board here? I don't They were. Hey, um, welcome to worship uh, together with the priests and the family church together. And if you are a visitor, we welcome you with open arms and open hearts. You know, as you look around you, right, think about the faces you see, that's the images of God. Um, today also is a special day in the sense that we get to do a sacred sacrament. What do I mean by that? Today we get to do communion. One of the many sacred sacraments we get to do. With that said, can you please rise and join me in this awesome God together? Thank you. 
please remain standing and join me in a call to worship. Just put it in your bulletin, show your projector. Together this day for this day for your week filled with need and demand. Come and find rest and renewal of our spirits. Open our heart in love to hear the voice of God. We want to find the rest in God's presence. Free from the time of the world. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in Him. Amen. 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 Standing and the open prayer. O Lord, o Lord we come from the demands and pressures of this past week, seeking rest in you. Give the cries of our hearts, our prayers, our needs. Heal and restore us, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. kind of like Jesus must have felt on the Last Supper that Thursday as he went to have supper with his, his folks for the last time before he would, he said, I won't have a meal with you again until we meet at the bank. So and I kind of feel that way because this is my last communion service with you today. So we'll try not to mess it up too much. Christ our Lord invites all to his table who both love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. You do not need to be a member of this church or of any church to share this meal with us, because we believe that is a matter between you and our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and before one another. Jesus, Lord, we schedule our lives down to the very second. We bow down to we are afraid to miss out on anything. And when it comes time to be with others, we spend our time worrying about details rather than longing for the visit. Forgive us when we get so caught up in the details and miss the opportunity to sit at your day of creation, God rested, creating a Sabbath, a time set apart to rest, to learn, to listen, to be quiet, and be at peace. Let Sabbath take root in your heart and in your life. Be at peace in God's love for you, for you are a child of God, and you are forgiven. Amen. First scripture reading is taken Second Corinthians verses chapter four, verses five to seven. For what we pray. 
preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as our servant for God's sake. For God who said, let light, shine, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory, displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that all this, all suppressing power, is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus. So that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for God's sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. The doctor reads today is taken from Mark chapter 2, verses 23. On Sabbath day, the Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain field. As his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why do you believe what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you ever read that David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the day of Abathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some of his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Another time Jesus went in the synagogue, and a man with shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath? To do good or to do evil? To save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around and then in anger and deeply distressed at the stubborn heart, said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
seeds, but how they've, they just have come together and, and put a new bell choir together. And I, I can see Sandy's happy that we've got four again. And how lovely, I want to make a point of this right now. We are so glad you're with us today, Sandy. Thank you. As some of you know, Sandy lives at the Roundhouse and is hoping that she can get back into her apartment soon. And she says, please pray. What's that? Your mouth will be happier. Amen. This morning, folks, we're going to be talking about Sabbath. Sabbath is another one of those words that unfortunately in translation, English doesn't have enough words for it. We think of Sabbath, okay, that's Sunday, we gotta be there on Sunday, unless there's a basketball game, a football game, or a golf outing on November 6th. What else do we fit in there, right? But that's not what it is. You see in our scriptures today that Jesus and his disciples are going through the fields and they're hungry, they're in need, so they are picking some of the grain. And of course, the Pharisees were following as close as they can to Jesus to shut them up. They, they're doing something bad on the Sabbath. They're working on the Sabbath. And Jesus reminds them of a hero of theirs, David, who when he was in need and was hungry, he went in and he got five loaves of bread that were supposed to be for the priest, and he gave it to his army and himself. <coughs> Pharisees didn't like being tripped up, so they followed him soon. And now Jesus goes to the synagogue, and there's a man there with a hand that's all shriveled up. And the Pharisees are still looking for a way to get him. This is the Sabbath after all. <laughs> and Jesus says, is it wrong to do good or to do evil on the Sabbath? Pharisees don't want to answer that because if they do, they're going to be fighting their own brother and doing wrong. So Jesus tells the man not to just get up, but he tells him to go and stand in the middle of everyone and to reach out his hand, and as he stretched out his hand, his hand was healed on the Sabbath. Now, the Jewish people celebrated Sabbath. Sun down on Friday night, the sun down on Saturday night. They full 24 hours. Sometimes we have trouble, don't we? Sitting here for even 45 minutes, it's too long, Pastor. Can't give the Lord more than 45 minutes. The Jewish people gave God 24 hours. Now I gotta tell you. We took Sunday as the Sabbath because that was the day that Jesus was resurrected on the first day of the week. So we take Sunday as our Sabbath. <coughs> And it goes all the way back to Genesis. God had created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. Now, what Jesus is trying to get through to these Pharisees, let me tell you. The Pharisees have made so many laws. They're not just rules. They're laws that they put into effect that from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday, there must be no work whatsoever. Now, they didn't just leave it at that. They went into depth on that. If you were a seamstress, you couldn't even carry a needle in case somebody might look at you and you needed to sew something. You could go to jail and be stoned if you carried a needle if you were a seamstress. You couldn't carry anything that had anything to do with your what's the word? profession. A baker couldn't wear his apron because they might 
get an urge to make something. They went through, I mean, every single thing, and it was a law that you couldn't do X, Y, Z. So if you were a teacher, you couldn't teach. If you were a preacher, you weren't supposed to preach. If you were a worker, you weren't supposed to work at all. Sundown Friday to Sundown Saturday. Now that gets a little weird, doesn't it? One of my friends from up north went over to um, Holly Lands on a tour. And she got, went into a, a hotel and there was a rabbi, a traditional rabbi standing there on the elevator. Now she had to go up to the third floor to get on, to walk across like I suppose it was a plaza to another place where she was going. And he stood there. And she went to the elevator and he said, <clears throat> Where are you going? She said, I'm going to the third floor. Oh, good. Could you push the button so I can go to two? <laughs> she said, What? It's Sabbath. You need to push the button so I can go to two. Would you mind? Pam was a good gal, and she said, well, of course I'll let you out. And she said she scratched her head about that for the longest time, and when she came home, she said, why did you do that? It's probably one of those laws. If you're a rabbi, you can't push the button on an elevator. They got ridiculous about the rules. But here's where the difference comes from, folks. In the word Sabbath comes from the word Sabbath, Shabbat, if you will. And it can be translated one of two ways. Chronos, which means chronologically, that kind of thing, in order, always. Or Kairos, which means in love. And that, my friends, is the difference. When we celebrate the Sabbath, our Sabbath, Jesus wants us to be celebrating Shabbat. He doesn't want us to live by the rule to the nth degree. He wants us to love as the original Sabbath was given. When God created the world, he allowed himself to Time to rest on the Sabbath, a gift to himself, to rest, to reflect on what he had done, and to recoup. How many of you are workaholics? Come on, let's be honest, who's one workaholic? I'm pointing the one over here, you bet. One back there. I know there's more than that. People who just can't sit still. They got to have accomplishments, accomplishments, accomplishments. That's chronos thinking. If I get through this day and I have it washed the dishes, made the bed, sometimes on my list it's get out of bed. All of, and maybe get dressed. All of those things, that's chronos thinking. That's not what God had in mind, according to what Jesus tells us. Jesus wants us to see the Shabbat, the Sabbath, the day that we choose to celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ to be a gift, not a burden. So often, how many of you say, oh, I get to sleep in, and now i got to get up and get dressed and go to church. And then i got to listen to that pastor, you know, the Bob and Head. And then I got to probably talk to some folk. <sighs> One of them. That's Kronos, folks. The person who comes and gives with all of their heart. Now I'm not talking just giving their tithes and offerings. I'm talking about someone who comes and gives that smile to the person who they see. That someone who comes and says, I am so glad to be a child of God. I'm so glad to be here today. That's Kairos, Shabbat. That's what Kairos was supposed to be, a gift. A gift of rest, a gift of realization, 
a gift of renewal, a gift of reading, a gift of whatever it is that you do to find yourself closer to God. Unfortunately, in this day and age, we found a way to work on Sundays. We found a way to have every kind of a sports event on Sunday. We found a way to tear down our time with God to the absolute minimum amount. Yeah, God, I know you with me 24-7, 365. I know that. I'll give you 45 minutes if I can. And even then, I'm going to be thinking about what's in the oven for lunch. Maybe I'll go out to dinner. Maybe, right? God says, don't be thinking about things. Jesus wants us to say, don't be thinking about things that you've got to get done today. That's not what it's about. How are you worshiping God? How are you accepting this gift that God has given you? How are you accepting that God wants you to be part of his family? You're important, folks. Every single one of you is important. And the work you do is very important. Even the play that you do is very important. But you also need to have time to remember that God is still here. It might be summer. School might be out. Things might be happening, as Deb was sharing with me before uh, the service today, that her message was going to be, that she talked to Lucy about, by the way, was about not forgetting. Now that the sun has come out, we can be outside and we can be enjoying ourselves. Let's not forget that God still is. And we still need to come together in community to worship Him. Today, folks, I'm grateful to see so many here as we celebrate communion together. That we celebrate the gift that God has given to us. And I pray that as you go forth, that you will start to look at your life and see, am I living in Kronos? Am I living in Kairos? Is it a burden to worship our Lord? Is it a gift to accept Him? Your choice. What does Shabbat mean? Amen. Please join me in the response to the word. <coughs> I believe in God, our Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. still on that side. Peace is still on this side, but the merge conversation is happening more and more, and you will find more things in your newsletter. You will find some things that will be coming out on Wednesday announcements, but let's not forget that even in summer, we need to give all that we are and all that we have to God. Please join me in the blessing over our Father and our Father. Bountiful God, you have blessed us with so many gifts. In this time of worship, may we be open to receiving these gifts. Help us claim our gifts and use them to bring liberation and justice to our hurting world. May the gifts and offerings we bring to you today be acceptable to you, and may we be your hands and feet 
and voice in this world. Amen. And now if you would please join us in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. It is, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful to me, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, who formed us in the image and breathed to us the breath of life. When we turned away and your love failed, your love remained steadfast. To deliver us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophet. And so, with the many people on earth, our company of heaven, we praise your name and glory your unending kingdom. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of our might, heaven and earth, earth are all the miracle. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. And he, to set at liberty all those who were oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, he ate with sinners, and by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now when the Lord ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and in the Holy Spirit. Now on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, Father. He broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, Father Almighty. Drink from this, he said, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these the gifts of prayer and trust. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, Holy Church, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of God's children, let us pray. Amen. Because there is one Lord, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of one Lord. The bread which we break is the sharing of the body of Christ. 
cup over which we give thanks is the sharing of the blood of Christ. has been set. Come forward and prepare. The Spirit moves you. I will be in the center if someone would just like a blessing.
the time when we share our stories and our concerns. And I have a few. I do lift up the joy that Sandy is with us today, safe in town. I understand you're staying with your son, is that correct? That's right. Correct. Um, we also lift up the joy that on June 5th, Dana and Nathan are going to celebrate 14 years of wedding bliss. And on June 7th, Tom and Pat have 44 years. Can't believe you put up with him now. <laughs> also, want to let you know that Dana's gallbladder surgery was a success. She's recovering nicely at home, and she's even behaving herself. I'm so happy. Uh, Joyce has asked for prayers for her friend Gail, who has cancer and has just started hospice. Prayers for, for her and her family. We also need Brett in our prayer, because he has three kidney, kidney stones that he's been trying to pass this week. Oh, oh, I feel for that man. And also, Mandy's uh, friend, uh, friend's dog, Indy, who just started going cancer is really a bad thing in, in this area, I believe. We also need to keep Randy in our prayers. As this coming Tuesday is his date for his surgery. And we know that he's going to come through this well. And as he continues to lose weight and to get well with the Lord, we know you're going to be it's going to be a good surgery. Are there others that maybe I'll write down if I can find a pen? Yeah, we forgot Grace and Charlie have an anniversary on the 6th this week, so oh, oh, oh. Grace came this week. June 6th? 20 years, Grace. 58. 58? Hi. I knew the middle name was Yvonne, but I couldn't remember the first name. Yes. Um, this is uh, both a joy and a concern, uh, so we'll be asking for prayers. Uh, some of you know that Deb and I have a few little collector cars, and one of them is the ones of Jensen, and it's a company that no one's ever heard of. They went out of business many years ago. But there is a very loyal group of Jensen owners that gathers once a year somewhere around the country. The last few years we've been in St. Louis, we've been in Chicago, New York, we've been down in Georgia, and this year we're going to be in Fond du Lac because Deb and I are getting to host all these people. So <laughs> it's a joy to see everybody and our concern of safe travels for everyone involved to, from, and during this event. And extra prayers for Deb because she's running everything and she's going to get very stressed out. <laughs> No, Deb never gets stressed out. She's not a workaholic. She's not enough. I didn't see your hand go up. <laughs> that was after he poked at me. Oh. He said, raise your hand. Um, <laughs> just prayers for myself. Um, I went to go to my mom's birthday, and I was missing her. So um, just continue prayers for her. I knew she, was, she came to my 
my mind so many times to fight it. Now I know why. Birthday is on Wednesday? Graduate is on Wednesday. And that equals Mother Day. Well, that's right. He's got to start the summer, doesn't he? And he's going to know today. All right. Happy birthday to Tracy on Friday. Oh, oh. Oh. Trying to get may God bless you with me. I've only been tired for three years. May God bless you all. the way the sun's coming in. If there's anybody over here that's got a prayer, I can't see you if in the, unless you jump. So. I don't see anybody else. Shall we pray? Lord God, we do come before you today with many, many concerns and thoughts and prayers. We've lifted them to you, Lord, and you, you've heard them. You've heard of the birthdays and the anniversaries. You've heard of the illnesses heard of the coming surgeries and the many that are dealing with cancer. We ask that be with those who are feeling grief over lost people in their lives. We ask that you be with Mike and Deb as they get ready to host this on the Black Card Show. We also ask, Lord, that you will continue to help Dana heal. Maybe she can give Mandy some ideas on how to stay well. We also ask that you be with the women of faith as they have their executive meeting deciding what they're going to do next. We ask for Yvonne's granddaughter, Adeline Yvonne. Surgery is coming up on July 10th to be a success. It's a long one, Lord, but she's just on the way to life by the boy. You know that. We ask that you be with Gail and her family as they deal with hospice. We just ask for your presence in all of our lives as you come and show us the way to be your people. We ask all of this in your blessed Son's name. Amen. And now within your own comfort zone, turn to the people around you and welcome them as you feel comfortable.
I am free. Are you guys free? I am free. There you go. As you leave this place, service is ended. Communion is finished. Go in peace. Wherever the world is full of nice people, if you can't find one, do that. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.